Returning to one of our top stories, President Trump at the Republican National Convention, he promised Americans a vaccine could be available a lot sooner than expected. We are delivering life-saving therapies and will produce a vaccine before the end of the year or maybe even sooner. We will defeat the virus, end the pandemic, and emerge stronger than ever before. Mr. Trump's own officials say the trial data needed to approve the vaccines most likely won't be ready until at least October. A COVID-19 vaccine from U.S.-based Arcturus Therapeutics has recently begun human trials and could provide the vaccine to dozens of countries around the world. Arcturus CEO and President Joseph Payne is here, joining us live now from San Diego, uh, California, via Skype. Uh, Joseph, thank you so much for being with us. So um, how realistic, based on the president's words, how realistic is it to have a vaccine out by the end of the year? And what do you generally make of the politicization of the vaccine process in this country? It's a great question. First of all, it's great to be with you, uh, Zane. I appreciate the time. Uh, the, the, Trump, the Trump administration and the country is definitely enthusiastic and excited about the recent progress and trials of vaccines. It's, it's no doubt an exciting time. Uh, I think the scientific community and as a group of uh, companies that are engaged in working on vaccines like Arcturus, we definitely want to get these vaccines approved as soon as possible and available. It's important that these uh, vaccines are manufacturable and, and ready to dis distribute as soon as possible. So with respect to uh, when, I, I, I think the, the Trump's comments are, are optimistic and ambitious, but I think it's uh, worthwhile to, to try to get them out as soon as possible and in line with what uh, others are saying. Right, so it's worthwhile to get them out as soon as possible. So how do you do that process? How do you expedite that process without cutting corners? How do you do that safely? Well, the rephrasing your question, it's all about approval. And the regulatory agencies are responsible for when to approve an, a, a drug, whether it's for emergency use authorization or, or, or otherwise. And we've had the opportunity to work with and talk with uh, many different countries and different regulatory agencies around the globe. And you can see that it's ultimately their decision when something is uh, approved or not. And we've seen other countries approve vaccines fairly, you know, you know right away. Uh, but again, it's not uh, this finish line that's been, uh, you know, the, this horse race that we're participating in. Uh, people originally were thinking that the finish line is approval, but it we're starting to get a better understanding what the finish line really is. It's not just approval, but it's availability of a vaccine, of one that's suitably safe and, and effective. And the uh, U.S. is leading the way. There's a lot of exciting vaccines, and it's definitely an exciting time. Um, you know, a lot of people have talked about, I mean, obviously you, you talked about the, the importance of the regulatory process. A lot of people have talked about just how much pressure uh, this administration may be putting on the FDA in terms of approving a vaccine. But uh, just switching gears, though, um, what are the challenges in terms of distributing a vaccine on, on this sort of scale? We're talking hundreds of millions of, of doses, if not more. Yeah, it's extraordinarily uh, costly and expensive. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the reasons why uh, countries are engaged with the Arcturus vaccine candidate is it's a potential single administration. And you can imagine if if you're distributing a vaccine twice for a shot plus a booster, uh, hurting cats is difficult enough, let alone hurting humans, and to come in for a, a second administration. So there's extraordinary costs with just distributing the vaccine and the logistics of doing that. But in addition, there's storage considerations and supply chain considerations. You want to make sure the vaccine is, is reasonably stable and does not require, uh, you know, costly, you know, uh, freezers that, uh, that it can be distributed in a, in a much more simple manner. And that's important as well. Well, there's people that want access to the first vaccines, but they also want access to any improvements or better vaccines, right? Uh, I, you know, here we are in the summer of 2020, and uh, people are missing out on the Olympics. And so the scientific community is looking at the vaccine Olympics, and, and they're seeing different types of vaccines doing uh, a good job in different events within this Olympics. You want to make sure you have uh, high neutralizing antibody titers, 
So in that event, the, the, the titer event, yeah, people are familiar with the word titers, but neutralizing antibody titers need to be high. And the RNA vaccines are doing an extraordinary job there. Uh, but there's another event where it's T cell data and the viral vector vaccines are, 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 are gathering promising data with T cells. And that's important for the durability of the vaccine and how long it lasts. And there's another event on how low the dose is. The lower the dose, the better the safety profile likely. So, so there's different events in these Olympics and, and Arcturus is definitely hoping to get gold medals in each of these events. Uh, we're, we're very excited because our, our preclinical data has su suggested that we have high neutralizing antibody titers like we've seen with other RNA vaccines, but also that we've seen robust T cell induction. So in that event, we're, mm -hmm. we have a chance of doing very well as well. And our first dose that we're evaluating in the clinic was one microgram. You know, some of the doses for these vaccines are at 1,000 micrograms or 100 micrograms.